Today, everyone, I will be discussing the module two, which is the central dogma of life. So for the learning outcomes, I will be discussing the nucleic acid structures. We have the DNA and RNA. The comparison will compare the double helical DNA conformation. We have the A DNA, B DNA as well as Z DNA. And I will also explain how DNA is packed in the chromosomes. We have the histones, the chromatins, and everything. And we have the central dogma of life. I will separately discuss the central dogma on a separate video so that it will not be heavy on your part. So first, let's start with the introduction. Here, as you can see, most DNA is actually found inside the nucleus of the cell where it forms the chromosome, okay? The chromosomes have proteins we call the histone, these proteins, which binds to DNA. DNA has two strands that twist in the shape of a spiral ladder, so we call it the helix, okay? It is made up of a four building blocks, I mean, yes, um, which is the nucleotide base pairs. You have the guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. So we will differentiate first what is a gene to clarify what is the gene and what is genome. When you say genome, it is the entire genetic information of an organism. And if you say it's a gene, it is the portion of a DNA that codes of a particular trait dito. Only a portion only. In genome, it includes the coding as well as non-coding regions of the DNA. An example, we have the Human Genome Project, which ended last 2003, I mean completed on that year. And its contribution with the diagnostics is that it uncovers the genetic con I, I mean contribution to an illness, which is accomplished through clone gene, I mean gene cloning. So the isolation of this gene provides us understanding about human disease at its fundamental level. So example of the preventive medicine, the pharmacogenomics, gene therapy as well drug therapy. All of them are made possible by the accel and accelerated by human genome project. So we'll be discussing the structure of the nucleic acid. So to define nucleic acid, define muna natin ano yung nucleic acid. This is the main information carrying molecules of the cell. We have two, your DNA or your deoxyribonucleic acid and your RNA, which is your ribonucleic acid. This is proposed, the structure of your DNA is actually proposed by James Watson's and Francis Crick in 1953, okay? So in the Watson-Crick structure, DNA consists of two long chains of subunits twisted around one another to form a double-stranded helix, okay? This helix is actually right-handed, which means that it looks like a barrel and as it progresses, it follows a clockwise direction. Okay, so each nucleotide here consists of, first we have uh, the pentose sugar. For, D, for the DNA, it's called deoxyribose, the pentose sugar. For RNA, it is ribose only. Okay, the two sugar differ by only the chemical group which is attached to the carbon. For the DNA, the body oxyribose, only the hydrogen atom is attached to the carbon. But if you say RNA, the one that is attached to the carbon is the hydroxyl group. Okay. So next we have the nitrogenous or the nitrogen containing bases. Example, we have these here. Okay. This has two classes, which is the purines which are nine-membered double-winged structure. We also have pyrimidines, which are six-membered single-winged structure. And lastly, we have the phosphate group. 
This one is attached to 5 carbon of the sugar in both DNA and RNA. We will locate this um, group. However, we should first discuss about the polarity of the DNA structure. Okay, so the directionality or the polarity of these nucleotides, so we will focus it here. So the five prime end is what we call the trunk end, and the tail end is called the three prime end. In a double-stranded DNA, as you can observe here, the paired strands are oriented in opposite direction. The five prime end here is aligned with the three prime end of the other. That is what we call anti-parallel. Okay, for this, we will locate saan yung pento sugar, ito, this portion, and this one is the phosphate group. So we have the sugar phosphate backbone here. So we have the nitrogen containing bases. You have thymine, cytosine, another side, adenine, guanine, thymine, that's it. So there are three, actually, there are three bonds present here. So as you can observe in the middle, these are the hydrogen bonds. So for the adenine and thymine pair, there are two hydrogen bonds. For the guanine and cytosine pair, we have the three hydrogen bonds. Okay, so the, the GC pair is quite stronger than the AP pair uh, because of the number of its hydrogen bonds. Okay, but there is also what we call the N glycosidic bonds. So for the N glycosidic bonds, it is the link the linkage between the bases and the sugar group dito here in this portion. Okay, for the purine bases, it is attached on the nitrogen and um, to the one carbon of the sugar group. However, if it's pyrimidine, for example, have your cytosine. So it's one nitrogen it's on its base is actually attached to the one carbon of the sugar group. That is the N-glycosidic bonds. And lastly, we have the one that is linking the phosphate group as well as the sugar. We call it the phosphodiester bonds. Okay. Next, we have the nitrogenous bases. I've been mentioning about purines and pyrimidines. So sino yung part? Parte nila. So, ano yung basis na, na purine at pyrimidine? So, here I'll be discussing purines will include adenine and guanine. Okay? Remember that purines, adenine, guanine only, but pyrimidines have three. We have thymine, cytosine, and uracil. However, uracil is found only in RNA. Okay? And the thymine here will be found only in DNA. Since in RNA, thymine will be replaced with uracil. Okay? So in complementary base pairing, adenine will always be paired with thymine and guanine will always be paired with cytosine. So differences between these bases are, are highlighted in this picture. Kikita nyo dito. So next, okay, to differentiate between DNA versus RNA, of course, easy. DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. In the sugar, uh, in the sugar group, we have the hydro, a hydrogen atom here placed in DNA. While in the RNA group, we have the hydroxyl group. Okay, so in the bases, RNA will have uracil. And DNA will only have thymine, and they are common in just with cytosine, guanine, and adenine. Okay, so the basic structure of DNA and RNA nucleoside will uh, include the sugar, that's the basis. But an, in the nucleotides, you have the sugar, plus the base, and the phosphate group. Okay, these are the fundamental building blocks of your DNA as well as your RNA molecules. Okay, 
Now let's go to the double helical DNA conformation. Actually, DNA can exist in several different forms. You have a DNA, A form, you have the B form, you have the Z form. Uh, the A DNA is the one seen only in conditions of low humidity. Okay. The A DNA double helix, as you can observe here, have a short with a narrow and deep major groove and a very shallow minor groove. Okay. So both the A DNA and B DNA are right handed double helix. So to differentiate both here, so this is the BDNA. It, BDNA actually forms under conditions of high humidity. So, and its structure corresponds to all of the, D, uh, not all, but some or most of the DNA in the cell, okay? So as you can observe here in the middle portion, here in this middle picture, BDNA double helix is thinner and longer with, if you compare it with ADNA. Okay, it has a very wide major groove and a very narrow minor groove. And lastly, you have the C form or the Z DNA. So it has actually an alternating Purina a primary basis, which is left-handed, meaning um, uh, it has a zigzag arrangement of the sugar phosphate backbone, giving the helix of form the name, that's why it's called ZDNA because of the zigzag arrangement. So it has actually a very thin, um, elongated, uh, narrow and deep minor groove. However, the major groove is flattened. So that's how you remember the or compare the three DNA conformations. Okay. So to further understand DNA. So we will discuss the DNA organization here. So at the very basic level, you see, DNA is wrapped around proteins, which is what uh, which is known as the histones. So this um, formation is what we call the nucleosome. The DNA, do you remember, it is negative charge because it has a phosphate group and um, the histone core is positive, positively charged. So the DNA will wrap tightly around this histone core. Okay, So this nucleosome is linked to the next one with the help of a linker DNA here. Okay. That's what we call the beads on a string structure. Okay. This is further compacted into a 30 nm fiber or 30 nanometer fiber, which is the diameter of the structure here. Then it will be um, extended and condensed and forming the chromosome. Okay, that's it. So first we will uh, define chromatin. It's actually a stainable material in the cell nucleus, the DNA the proteins. The, um, it has two major types of proteins, which is associated with the DNA in chromatin. You have the histone and non-histones. Histones actually the most abundant proteins in chromatin, and they have, again, a net positive charge that facilitates their binding to a negatively charged DNA. Okay. So it has two types, the nucleosomal histone, H2A here, H2B, H3, and H4. The second type is the linker histones, which will help in the linkage of the two um, nucleosome, which is the H1 and H5. So we have to be familiar with nucleosome. Actually, nucleosome contains a protein core made out of eight histone molecule. Ito. Mm -mm. So as indicated or seen in this figure, the nucleosome core particle is released from chromatin through um, 
digestion of the linker DNA with nuclease. Ito. So nuclease, uh, nuclease is an enzyme that breaks down the DNA. Okay? Um, it will degrade the linker DNA. Ito. So after the dissociation of the isolated nucleosome, you can see that there is 146 nucleotide pair DNA double helix. Separated ito, tapos may octameric histone core. If you further dissociate this, there will be two H2A, dalawang H2B, H3, as well as H4. Okay. Then, after that one, diba, sabi, uh, from what I've discussed, it will um, condensed further into 30 nm uh, or it will be compacted into a structure about 30 nm in diameter which we call the 30 nm chromatin fiber so this one is also called the solenoid model okay so you as you can see here this one is actually looped more further or it will be coiled further to give rise to the chromosome so uh, here in electron micrograph, actually, this 3NM chromatin fiber has an irregular zigzag pattern of the nucleosomes. Okay, here. So for additional knowledge about DNA organization, since I've already discussed about the histone proteins, we also have the non-histone proteins. This is associated with DNA, which is also less abundant than histones. To differentiate both, this is acidic. Non-histone proteins are acidic, meaning they have a negative charge. If you compare it with histone, which is in positive charge, okay? The roles and their function will be on the helping role during the DNA replication, the repair, transcription, which includes a gene regulation, a recombination. So in this example, in this picture, you can see that the non-histone proteins is attached on the linker DNA. Its role here is to help package DNA into more complex structure. Okay. So for the central dogma of life, it will be discussed separately into a different video. So that's it for the first four. Thank you very much for listening.